I think one of the most underrated future young breakout guys is Patrick Williams. He's been in kind of a crap situation on the Bulls, but there is a ton of promise, and he's already a legitimately good defender. And we're going to talk about his defense today because I think it's very underrated how actually good he is as a 21-year-old. But before we get started, I did relaunch, or I guess launch my Patreon for this YouTube for the first time. If you would like to be able to vote on videos or more directly request what kind of content I make, or just to have a more direct line of communication, or you know, we can request benefits or, or whatever, then subscribing would be incredible. Um, or if not, just sharing it would be, would be cool as well. So if you're interested, uh, my Patreon's in the description. Let's get into it. Uh, Patrick Williams, I think, could be the the Bulls like quote unquote Giannis defender. I, I say that because that doesn't like really exist. But as a team that hopes to contend in the Eastern Conference over the next like ten years, assuming Giannis stays in Milwaukee, you, you kind of need a guy who can um, who can check him at least a little bit. I think Pat has the frame to do that for sure. Super strong, long, six eight, bouncy has really, really quick explosion off of the ground, which is really important against Giannis, especially when he's going to be pushing you back. Pat will, despite being pushed back a little bit, leaps quickly to block this layup um, because of just how long he is, how good of a rim protector he is. We'll, we'll get to that as we continue to talk more about him. But having a guy to just like be able to handle a strength-based creator like Giannis, obviously, you know, Pat, again, we see him get up with his quick leaping, um, there are other, you know, of these types of players in the league, but I think Giannis is just a particularly important one given the conference division he plays in. And his strength is going to be able to keep Giannis away from the basket, um, as, you know, guys like, I think, like Thad Young or players like that have been able to do in the past, where um, if you can keep Giannis outside of the restricted area, uh, look how low Pat Will gets, how good he's, you know, moving his feet, how active he is, he's playing straight up with his chest. And he forces Giannis to, like, to take a contested shot outside of the restricted area. He obviously, you know, he's Giannis, so he gets the rebound. But Pat Will, I think, forces the kind of shot diet you want out of Giannis, theoretically, to best check him. Um, even though Giannis is going to hit some shots, um, like this fade, these are the kind of shots that you want Giannis taking against you. Um, you want him staying out of the restricted area. And I think Pat is the kind of defender who can do that. And I think this is, like going to be characteristic of, of Pat's defense both now and in the future. He has very like defined strengths and weaknesses, which are both you know very valuable and pretty damning in their own ways. Um, and I think it's going to limit him somewhat, but the like the stuff he can do is super valuable. I think Pat in straight ISO is pretty good, as Williams has issues with like other kinds of on ball and perimeter defense for sure, which we'll get into. But you know he can slide in a straight line pretty decent. And as we mentioned, he's strong, he's long, he's athletic, he's explosive. And against these like stationary you know drivers, um, I think Jimmy is another guy who you know under the arch like the archetype of player, the strength based creator that Pat Will's not gonna you know be able to, gonna be able to handle someone who's not gonna change directions a ton or make a bunch of complex handle moves. Uh, someone who just has to, you know, use his size, use his strength, his technique, his length to to stay in front of him. And I do think that's going to be a strength of his. Um, the the main other strength is just his defensive playmaking, his shot blocking, as we talked about. Really awesome timing, vertical leaping. is a really good, like, jump shot blocker. Um, again, probably just, you know, because of the length as well. He's very, very aggressive rotating and making plays on the ball. Um, it's really, really good against like ball handlers who aren't super aware of great passers because Pat Will will swarm you and like his length pops so hard on all of these plays. We'll use his length to to beat you. As a backline defender, he's not perfect yet, but there are some flashes of, I would say more than flashes of being early and being really great as a rotating defender where he is the backline defense here as Beverly gets, and you know, Vooch get cooked by Harden. Um, it is Pat Will's responsibility to be early. He's in the paint, uh, loading up before Harden even touches the paint, and he uses his length to get over and contest uh, and get a block there. It's really solid stuff. Again, we see him sink down for a block here. I love how the, the little head manipulation, ball manipulation by this point guard doesn't fool him at all, and Pat gets over there, times up that block and saves a play again, like the weak side help defender. We've talked about three in rim protection on this channel, like with Jaden McDaniels, and it's just so important in the league now um, to have like non-center size players who protect the rim and can be a help rim protector when you know defenders get beat inevitably. 
I think Pat can be a little like tunnel vision-y, over aggressive, where plays like this where he like is able to dive really hard and make a play are nice. I think they're you know it's good defensive playmaking. I love the aggression, the instincts, but he can be a little like unaware of his assignments at times, like and that's uh, a thing that's gonna matter more obviously at high levels. Imagine this is not like Kuminga and you know some random wing. Um, it's Steph and it's Draymond or you know actual players who can make great decisions and be more threatening. And I think plays like this could get dicey there because a great player can just kick it out for a three. But overall, I think this is a much better problem to have than the opposite one, like not being a good rotational defender or not being aggressive. Absolutely love this play. I think this is a showcase of some of Pat Will's best defensive abilities. He's he's so early rotating again. Um, Buddy Heald hasn't even entered the paint, and Pat Will is, you know, stance up, ready to help Zach Levine after he got beat. And then he's fast recovering to contest the shot. Look at his length again. It's so functional. The timing is great. Um, he's like a whole player away. This is a ridiculous image. Like, look how long his arms are to get to that shot. Um, there are some really, really high-level defensive flashes. He's just really good impacting the game with his length. Again, we'll talk about issues issues with you know point of attack, screen defense, but when he is able to you know be be all over a player, he's so good at keeping his hands in the passing lanes, making passes more difficult, and he gets a lot of steals because of it, um, because of that activity, and just because of how really functionally long he is. He's so good at manipulating and weaponizing that length. Another great rotation here is again notices his defender got beat, slide down, uses length for the steal. This is the kind of high level defense that Patrick Williams is bringing. Again. He notices that his teammate gets beat 1v1, slides over to help, his length is in the passing lanes, and there's nowhere to go. This is the stuff that's going to continue to be valuable, even in the playoffs. This like team rotational defense stuff is all really, really great. There are some flashes of screen defense. It's one of his biggest issues, like his change of direction, his like hip mobility, we'll get to. But there is pretty decent stuff, again. He's able to stay with Jamal Murray, um, stay attached pretty well. And then this is, you know, another example of him using his length to create a turnover this time on, on Jokic. It's kind of insane how often he's able to do that. Um, and again, this is another example of, of against like less, you know, aware passers and such, um, end of shot clock. He can, his swarming defense, like as like a Havoc double chaos defender, Pat Will is one of the best in the league already, I think. It's, it's so impressive. As I mentioned, backline stuff isn't perfect. Like he needs to be in the paint now and he doesn't rotate at all and Gives up, a, gives up a dunk. He's definitely not mistake-free. Um, the highs are really high, and overall, it's, it's you know, I would say it's more good than it's bad, but he definitely does, like, make some mistakes on defense still. He's still 21. It's normal. Um, like, he'll get back cut from time to time, just zoning in fully on the ball, totally losing his man. Um, or just having struggles, you know, combining his perimeter movement issues with this kind of, with these lapses, again, just lets his, lets his man go right by there. But I think the bigger issue, which is, that's like, whatever, I don't know. He's, I think most players tend to cut stuff like that out as they age. But I think the, like, the overall mobility, hip opening, foot speed will be the the main thing that limits Pat Will to, like, uh, a Giannis ISO type defender and a weak side rim protector and make him not be able to guard the perimeter very much because his hips just open so slowly. Ground coverage is so important. Closeouts are so important in the league. Um, just because of how much pace and space there is. And Pat Will really struggles to change directions and maintain his footing against quicker players, which, of course, guarding the perimeter is one of the like primary things that you're doing. Just just not very quick or like responsive in these perimeter situations at this point. And against speed, he really struggles. As we kind of talked about before, he has some really good moments as an isolation defender against players who you know aren't super quick or are dynamic. Um... But against players like Markel Fultz, who have excellent burst, um, that lack of hip mobility, lack of ability to open his hips and chase really hurts him and gets him beat quite a bit. You know, he'll foul, he won't get, he won't be able to keep the defender in front, and ultimately bad things, bad things happen for, for that defense as a whole. Um, again, just not so good at hanging with um, these guards on like pick and roll, um, pick and roll situations, and it's fine. Like he doesn't need to be a pick and roll point of attack defender. He's six eight and he's a forward. Um, but obviously, I, I think it's like like a weakness at this point that is definitely exploitable, especially on these like simple screen actions that teams run all the time. That teams run for their big like their big players, six eight, like 
Jason Tatum is a large wing, and he just doesn't have the agility to stay attached and to take a you know a tight path around that screen. And I think it's going to be a way that teams can definitely exploit him at least at this point in the future. Um, playoff teams will will be good at that. But there are flashes. The main thing I think is just like his lower body core strength and the lateral quickness left to right um, could make him like pretty decent in some situations like this where he's not really chasing as much as he's just like blowing through a screen really really great attach here hand on roller and um you know ready for the ready for the drive and i think the rear view contests like a la thigh bowl and such could get quite good just because of how great his length is and how good he is being a havoc length defender and someone who's always bothering with with that length or a play like this really stands out again, where he can get skinny, and when he does get skinny, that's going to be like the main improvement for him, honestly, on defense. Just keep getting skinny over screens, Pat. Um, it looks really, really good. He has, again, has the strength to shake off any contact that Brooke, Brooke Lopez would bring, and is able to stick with Drew Holiday and force a pretty tough shot. It's, it's good stuff. Um, I think Pat, again, could be a very good defender. He could be like the, he kind of like gives me Aaron Gordon vibes um, in, in different ways. Gordon is, you know, a much better athlete, probably much better hit mobility, better perimeter defender. But similarly, was like the, was the, the Nuggets primary like big dude who can kind of dribble stopper. Like he was giving Kevin Durant lots of problems. He gave LeBron problems. His strength and length and overall, you know, technique and energy on the ball were huge. And I think that's definitely a role that Pat Will could replicate as like their a defense's main like forward. Also, I don't think AG is as good of a rim protector as Patrick Williams, but obviously there were some ridiculous moments of him protecting the rim. But I think as Patrick Williams ages and continues to develop, that's the kind of defender he could become, which is you know the best defender on a title winning team, not like an all defense guy or like an, you know a first team all defense defensive player of the year level player, but a very very good defender. Again, I think whatever team uh, unlocks him, honestly, I don't think it's going to be the Bulls. Um, has to be aware of his strengths and weaknesses. Really commit him to playing as a weak side rim protector, as like a you know bigger defender, and work on his and hide him as much from those like perimeter screen situations. But like again, I think Patrick Williams is already a positive defender. I would call him a good defender today. Um, not an amazing one, but definitely a good one. And I think that's awesome for how young he is, how kind of tough his situation's been, and how good of an offensive player I think he could be too. I mean, pretty quietly, like a knockdown three-point shooter at this point in his career with some flashes on the perimeter. Um, he's going to be really good. And I think he's gotten lost a little bit. Um, but I think if the situation's good in Chicago or if he gets traded somehow, like this could be the year that Pat Will is. People are like, oh yeah, I see why they drafted him in the top five. Like, yeah, he's going to be good.